Back in January of last year, we flew our altimeter for the first time, and we got data from it in February. You can watch those videos in the card. But basically what happened was that in both of our altimeter flights, the parachute did not stay attached to the rocket. The altimeter wasn't affected because it was still attached to the parachute, but the rocket itself kept on getting damaged. We still needed the rocket though because we weren't done with testing the altimeter. Even though we've gotten data from it, we still have to validate it so we can trust it in the future. To validate it, we have to get the altitude data from a different source, and if the two values agree, our altimeter works. I spent some time fixing the Zephyr Jr. rocket, which I explained in the 100 subscribers video, so it's now ready for its next fight with the altimeter. So we're going to fight with two altimeters, our altimeter and the SD's altimeter. The SD's altimeter isn't quite as fancy as ours. It only gives us the highest altitude of flight, unlike ours, which logs the altitude data 60 times a second, which we can then use to find the rocket's velocity and acceleration, but that's one of the reasons we built our own altimeter. I attached it to the rocket by using the given metal twist tie and tying it to the shock cord. Then I taped it. To keep the inside air pressure the same as the outside air pressure, I cut a little hole here. This is important because the altimeters measure altitude by measuring air pressure. I then bought an SD's universal astrocam to record some onboard video. It attaches to the rocket by using this mount that's taped on. This really made me think about how much of a beating this rocket has taken. It's flown a total of four times, all in which the parachute didn't stay connected to the rocket or didn't open, resulting in crashes. Two fins have broken off, then were glued back on. The shock cord has torn out three times. There's glue all over the inside of the body tube from all the times I've tried to fix the shock cord. The body tube has gotten kinked from its crashes. I had to cut the rocket in half to fix the shock cord attachment and the kink. There was a cut where I wanted to cut the body tube in half, but it ended up being too low on the rocket. It's fallen off a shelf, scratching up the nose gun and messing up its tip. And of course, most recently, I cut a hole in it for the altimeters, and I put tape on the body tube to mount the camera, which will mess up the body tube once I take it off. Sorry, man. For this fight, the rockets didn't need to go super high, so we flew it on an SD's D12. So yeah, the parachute didn't eject again, so we had another crash landing. The box containing the altimeter was broken, but thankfully, the altimeter inside was fine. It looks like the side of the box broke from the screw stabbing into it, but there was just enough cushion space that the altimeter wasn't damaged. The next thing I did was check the SD's altimeter, and of course, it said zero feet. I wanted to fly the rocket again, just to see if we can get any reading from the SD's altimeter. I unscrewed the altimeter box from the nose cone, because it was broken, then I loaded a new engine in. That's when I noticed the bottom centering ring wasn't even attached anymore. This rocket has an E-size engine mount, so to fly Ds, we need a spacer to keep the engine from shooting upwards. Even though this distance is short, if the engine shoots upward fast enough, it can do some damage. So I'd forgotten to bring the spacer, and this was probably caused by that. I knew that this next launch would probably be the Zephyr Jr.'s last. One. So, another crash landing. It looks like the ejection charge had just enough power to eject the nose cone, but not the parachute. I think I know why this happened. In the onboard video, right when the ejection charge happens, you can see a bunch of smoke coming out near the top of the fins. This is where I made the cut to repair the shock cord attachment. The inside of the rocket looks like the 3D printed coupler I made to attach the two pieces back together melted and let too much of the pressure out the sides. But the most important part of this launch was to see if the SD's altimeter would measure anything, which of course it didn't. I wasted 30 bucks on this thing, so hopefully I can get a refund. Our altimeter, on the other hand, measured an altitude of about 300 feet, which seems pretty accurate based on the videos. This was obviously for the first flight because the box broke, then was removed for the second one. This is a bad way to validate the data though, so it doesn't quite count. We'll have to somehow do a different test in the future. As for the Zephyr Jr., we're not going to fly it anymore. I scavenged some parts from it, then I fixed up the outside from this to this. So we didn't exactly get what we wanted, but hey, we got some pretty good data from the altimeter, and we got some pretty cool onboard footage for the first time. 
If you want to make an altimeter like this, there's kind of a guide down in the description, so make sure to check that out. I might make a video tutorial sometime in the future. We've got some pretty exciting things coming this year, so make sure to subscribe and we'll see you soon.